Hey everyone, welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 side chaining techniques course. In this video, I want to expand on the previous video and show you some different options for side chain input sources. So in the previous video, we kept it really basic. We basically just took an audio region of a kick drum and we used that as a side chain source to apply compression in a ducking effect to a bass line. And the result we got was something like this. Now, it wasn't that long ago in Logic's history that you couldn't have your sidechain source be an instrument or inside of like a drum machine designer kit. It basically had to be a bus or it had to be audio. But nowadays you can use just about anything as a sidechain input source. So here I have another kick track. And on this kick track, we just have quick sampler with the exact same sample you heard in the previous video loaded inside of quick sampler. So hypothetically, you could just find any kick sample you want, drop it into quick sampler and use that both as your kick drum and as a side chain source or have it separate. You could separate your side chain track from your sample track just by muting that track. Because remember we said that when you mute a side chain source, it does not mute the signal going into the side chain input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my side chain menu. We're going to go to instrument this time and let's select kick instrument. And by the way, if you have a big project with lots of tracks in it, it may be difficult to find exactly the track you're looking for up here. So one thing I do sometimes is I will change the name of my sidechain source track to have an SC on it for sidechain. And then all I do is I come up here and I use the search option in the menu to search up for SC and all of my tracks that are being used as sidechain input sources will show up without having to dig through the menus. So I can just select that and it's the exact same kick drum. So I'm gonna get the exact same amount of compression ducking that we did before. Okay, so I've brought the attack and release back down to their lowest values. And as I mentioned before, yeah, you can mute your sidechain source and the ducking will still happen. You can pull up the uh, volume or pull down the volume. It's not going to have any effect on the ducking effect. However, what will have an effect on the ducking is any effects that you add to the sidechain source track. So for example, I could pull up the enveloper plugin. This is inside of Dynamics. And at the time of making this video, the enveloper still has this very outdated UI but we'll work with it. And what you can do with the enveloper is it's like a transient designer. So you can increase or decrease the attack of a sound. You can increase or decrease the release or the tail of a sound. So if I were to add more attack and then reduce the sustain or the, the release rather, this is going to mean that we're gonna get more compression. And this also means that the release of the compressor will come back a bit quicker. Now we are clipping the track at this point, but you can see there, I had to pull up the time of the attack a little bit there to get more of the transient in there. But it looks like we're getting about two or three dB more of ducking than we were before. Now, you might say, I really want that to be extreme. I want the most amount of attack as possible, and I want the least amount of release as possible as well. And you can certainly do that, but it's going to affect your audible kick sound. Well, in this case, what we could do is we could have this uh, kick sidechain track here just sort of playing along with the track, but muted in the mix. And we could bring in a completely different track that still has a four on the floor kick, but doesn't have the enveloper on it that our instrument track does. So you're sort of using this as like a ghost sidechain source that's in the background and it's playing, but it's muted. Now,
Now, what if you wanted the kick drum or some other drum inside of a drum machine designer track to be your sidechain source? Well, you can do that too. If you just open up your DMD kit, you'll see that it's actually just a track stack with a bunch of drum tracks inside. And so here's the kick drum for that drum beat. If you go into your compressor and go to instrument, you'll see all of those kit pieces in the menu. So I can select that specific kick drum as well. And this one already has an enveloper on it with some softer settings. But let's say that we wanted more than one track to be our sidechain source. Maybe I want the kick, the snare, and this clap track to all be sidechain sources. Well, in order to do that, what you can do is you can select those tracks. I'm just holding command to select those. Let's create a send. Let's go to bus two here. I'm gonna option click on the send amount, and I'm also gonna make these pre-fader. Now, what this is gonna do is it's going to create an aux track over here because Logic thinks that you're feeding signal from these three tracks over to another track, and that's exactly what it's gonna to try to do. So you can hear that there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that aux track and hit delete, and it's gonna warn you, hey, this aux track is receiving signal from ascend. We're gonna say delete anyway, and then let's open up our compressor again, and let's go into our side chain input menu. We'll go to bus this time, and here it is, bus two. So just keep in mind, that the reason why we don't wanna keep the aux track there is because the signal from bus two is going straight to the sidechain input on the compressor. It's not going from here to an aux track then to the sidechain input. It's going directly from the bus, from the send, over to the sidechain input. That's why you don't need the aux track in between. And you can see there when the kick hits, it comes up almost close to negative 10, but then when the snare and claps hit, it's going over negative 10. So we're getting a little bit more gain reduction on the snare hits than we are on the kick hits because it's the combined summed signal of all three of these tracks. Now let's take this one step further and our, you know, our bass is kind of a little boring. So let's go ahead and mute that basic bass. Let's turn on this arpeggiated bass. The arpeggiated bass is basically just an ES2 patch. And then I've got the arpeggiator on here just playing 16th notes. Yeah, the arpeggiated bass is really loud. There's no motion, there's no dynamics to it. It's all just straight 16th notes. So let's take that compressor that's on our basic bass and let's move that over to the arpeggiated bass. And now this arpeggiated bass is going to be ducked on the downbeats. <laughs> Okay, so those are sidechain input sources in Logic Pro. The only one up here that we haven't talked about is input. And basically this just means that you can have a microphone in real time coming through your audio interface, ducking the compressor. This can be helpful for using Logic for like broadcasting or podcasting, where you want some real time effects, like you want your voice to duck a music track or something like that. We will talk about that later in the course, but for now we're just gonna kind of focus on music examples. In the next video, we are going to move on to the sidechain detection options along with the sidechain filter options. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.